Whether you're recording a full band or just yourself, this video will show you the basics of recording in Harrison Mixbus 32C version 8. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Nathan from Harrison Consoles. And what I have here in front of me is a basic session and my acoustic guitar. The basic conventions used to record in Mixbus harkens back to the old analog days where you had a big transport that you would arm your individual tracks and you were able to punch in and punch out and start the master recording off in that one box. So if you look up here in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you can see we have our main transport and we have a play button, a stop button, and we have our master record arm. And you can see the shortcut for that is shift R. So if I go ahead and do that, you can see that this master record arm turns on and off. Now with that engaged, I can go ahead and press play but nothing will be recorded until I arm one track or multiple tracks. So for instance, I wanna record some acoustic guitar. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm the track. And now when I press the space bar, that's gonna start recording. And press the space bar again, and that will stop recording. Now you can see at the end there, it picked up my voice in the microphone and it actually captured that performance. But let's say you don't want to arm the master record every single time you want to start recording. The shortcut for that is shift space bar. And it looks like this shift space bar. So you can see that the master arm record was engaged and we started recording right away at bar 94. So a good example of this is if you're recording a band, you might have multiple tracks armed at one time, but you just want to play the session and not actually start recording just yet. Maybe they will listen to the intro and everyone wants to come in on the verse. So for that situation, you would just put your playhead where you want to start playback and press play. And then when you're ready to start recording, you can just do shift R, that will turn on the master record arm, and now you're recording. And the opposite of that is also true. If we want to start recording, I can do shift space bar. But you can see that my track is not armed yet. So for that, I can do shift B, or just use my mouse to click on the record button. And now we'll be recording. And I can take it back out of recording by hitting shift B, or just using my mouse. So you can see I can punch in and then punch back out. I can do shift B again to punch in and then this time do shift R to turn off the master record arm, which essentially does the same thing. So either way you want to work, that's perfectly fine. Just pick one and go with it. So if you're anything like me, I'm usually at my desk with a microphone in front of me and some headphones on. And I usually have my speakers off so that way the sound doesn't bleed into the microphone. And I'm just sitting there recording myself all day, all night, layering different parts, playing acoustic, playing electric. I might grab a bass, I might grab my mandolin or a dobro. So the two main ways I record myself is just simply doing the shift spacebar option. Then if I have to punch in more times than not, I do a pre-roll recording. So I've already recorded a part on this track, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new playlist. And we'll call it take one. So that way I'm just starting with a clean slate. And I'm gonna go ahead and start right here on the verse, but go ahead and give me two measures to listen to what my intro is, and then I'm gonna start playing. So shift space bar, and here we go. Okay, so let's say that was actually pretty good, but I actually want to punch in on bar 15 because maybe I messed up. Hey, it happens sometimes, but not a lot. So I'm going to set my playhead to bar 15 and the pre-roll shortcut is shift greater than, which are the two keys right above your space bar. So shift greater than, you'll see that gives me two measures of pre-roll. Now, 
Now, I hope you noticed that I actually captured those two bars before the playhead passed bar 15. So what's cool about this pre-roll option is if I come in a little bit early or play some cool stuff before I actually wanted to start recording, then it's gonna capture all that and I have the option to pull it back or edit it however I want. So for example, I can click on this region and pull it back a little bit and there's everything that it captured while it was in that pre-roll mode. Okay, similar to pre-roll is called count in and it's actually gonna count in whatever you predefine in preferences. So if we go to our preferences here and we click on transport, we can see that the pre-roll is two bars, but we can set it to four bars, one bar, or we can even do it to seconds. But for me, two bars is usually pretty good. So I am actually going to keep it that way. And we can see now that the shift lesser than symbol is your count in, or you can go to the menu and click on transport. You can see that pre-roll is shift greater than and record with count in is shift lesser than. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to go into the menu with your mouse when you're trying to record by yourself. So it's definitely easier just to use shortcuts. So in this situation, I actually want the click to be on. So you can use the tilde key up in the left-hand corner of your keyboard, or you can use your mouse to click on the metronome icon up here in the top left-hand corner. And a really cool trick here is to use your mouse wheel over the metronome icon. You can actually raise and lower the volume of the metronome just by moving your mouse wheel. I'll bring it up by 3 dB just to make sure I can hear it. And I am gonna go to my audio connections manager and make sure my click out is going to the loopback because that is how I am capturing the audio for this video. So if I don't do that, you won't be able to hear the click as I'm hearing it right here in my headphones. So with that said, here we go. We can do record with count in. One, two, three, four. So we have record with pre-roll and we have record with count in. Another cool thing about the old school days of recording with analog tape or even hard disk recorders is you had buttons on there that said punch in and punch out. So you could keep all your tracks armed and just punch in and out by using those buttons. And thankfully Mixbus has that option right here on top. You can see we have punch in and out. So there's a few different ways of doing this. We can use the range tool to make a range. And we're gonna go between bar 11 and bar 19. And now I'm gonna use the left bracket and that's going to set my punch in and punch out points. But one thing to keep in mind is you do wanna turn on the punch in and punch out buttons. So you actually start recording and stop recording when you want. And a shortcut for that is the number eight across the keyboard. So you can see hitting that one button turns both the punch in and punch out on or off. So just for example, if I go ahead and start recording right now, let's just see what happens. Okay, so in this situation, we actually started recording right where the playhead was because the punch in and out was not set. So let me press eight. So now that is engaged. And now see what happens if I start back at measure nine. They give me a little bit of lead in and then it's gonna punch in at bar 11. So shift space bar to start recording. Nothing's being recorded yet. Okay, so I kept recording and kept playing, but you can see that it actually punched me out at bar 19, which is maybe what you want in a certain situation if you're recording yourself, or you just happen to know that you only wanna punch in at a certain spot 
and you only want to punch out in a certain spot. So an alternative to using the range tool to set your punch in and out points, you can actually just press play and use the comma and period keys, which is the same keys that the greater than and less than symbols are on. And you can set your punch in and punch out points that way. So let me show you. We're just gonna press play. And we're gonna press comma. And now press period. So that's another way of making a range. But really, this only gets you halfway there. There is another button you can hold down to set your punch in and punch out points. Let me show you that. If you're on a Mac, you can hold down command or control on a PC, and it will automatically put in your punch in and punch out points while you're rolling the transport. So command comma will be your punch in and command period will be your punch out. So I'm gonna press play. Two, three, four. So there's my punch in. And there's my punch out. Now alternatively, you can do the same thing with loop by holding down control on a Mac or alt on a PC and still using the comma and period keys. So let me show you that option. There's my loop in and my loop out. So there's a very small nuance there, but it can be very, very helpful if you're just playing along and be like, oh, I actually want to punch in right there and go ahead and set your punch in and punch out points. But don't forget, once you set those and you want to start recording, press number eight across the top of your keyboard and that will make sure you're ready to go to start recording. There is a way to do loop recording just by setting your loop points on the timeline and then pressing L to start your loop and then pressing shift R to engage the master record arm. And now you can just loop that section over and over and record as many takes as you want. Maybe you're doing a vocal line or trying to record a guitar solo. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and trim a little bit before and after, and you can edit what you need to. Something that might be helpful while you're recording is using the auto return option. And that is engaged by using your mouse and clicking on the auto return button or pressing seven on top of your keyboard. So if I know I wanna start on bar 10, I can just go ahead and press record and play. Then when I press spacebar to stop, my playhead will go back to bar 10 every single time. So I don't have to use my mouse to click over on bar 10 when I stop. Because otherwise, if I stop over here, it's gonna stop on bar 14 and it's not gonna set me back up on bar 10 to start recording again. So using the auto return is gonna save you a lot of time during your session. And the last thing to consider is using your navigation timeline up at the top and using your Q and W keys to go between different sections of your song really fast. And you can also utilize the record page in the same way. So if I wanna start recording right here on the verse, I can still use my pre-roll keyboard shortcut with my cursor right here on the verse marker. And I can also check my input here on the record page where you can see your signal nice and big. Then you can go over here, arm your track, and go ahead and do record your pre-roll and start recording. One, two, three, play.
So this has been an overview on how to record in Mixbus 32C version 8. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and click the bell. So that way you'll be notified the next time we release a video here on the channel. Once again, I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles, and I will see you in the next video.